wages are rising. That's right. Wages went up 4.9%. People are making more money. Unemployment is at an all time low. Things are fun. Things are going well. But I got a question for you. Why is crime spiking? Why is homelessness spiking? I'm about to give you a play-by-play -play breakdown of what's going on. Yes, based upon the official numbers, wages have gone up almost 5%. It's true. But, <laughs> depending on what you're buying, inflation has gone up 16 to 30%. So here it is. I recently bought an 85 inch television and I paid for that 85 inch television the same money that I paid for my 65 inch television in 2016. So inflation is segmented. Inflation isn't across the board, just like these wages are not across the board. So where's the inflation? Housing in some markets has gone up 33%, and this includes rent and buying a house. So here you are with your 5% raise and the cost of your apartment, the cost of your house, the cost of your mortgage, the cost of your rent has gone up 30%. So you're still 25% behind in terms of where you live. That's, that's huge, that's huge. So statistically inflation was like 7% and this is the overall economy. And this is where people get lost looking at the overall economy because let's take the segmentation. As I just outlined, housing has gone up 30% in a year. Food has gone up 20%. And we all know what's going on with gas. So what is happening is the things that you need, <clears throat> shelter, gas, food, prices are going through the roof. So let's talk about this 5% wage increase. Let's say you're at McDonald's and you were making 10 bucks an hour and they gave you a 5% increase. Um, that's like 50 cents an hour. That ain't really gonna do anything for your budget. I mean, it's literally half a dollar per hour. So you literally make $80 per month more and you make $1,000 a year more. They ain't really doing nothing for your budget. Ain't doing nothing for your budget. So Jamie Dimon, the CEO of Chase Bank says, the economy's doing well, everything's going on. And this is where the segmentation comes into play. If you're looking at the average person, the economy sucks. But if you're looking at someone like Jamie Dimon, who's a billionaire, the economy is great because typically segmentation is everything. You, you cannot look at everything as like, hey, wages went up 5% across the board. You know, 5%, you're making 10 bucks an hour, 5%, you're making 12 bucks an hour. They, they, ain't, they ain't really doing nothing. They ain't really doing nothing. 5%, you making a million a year. You, you, you can kind of see that a little bit. You can kind of see that because, you know, 10% of a million is $100,000. So 5% is a $50,000 raise. Broken down per month, that's $4,000. I mean, you know, once again, the percentages, when you apply these percentages to large sums, they seem a little bit more remarkable. But when you apply 
5% to seven bucks an hour, eight bucks an hour. No, it, it ain't really transformative at all. It's not. So what I think we're having right now is a case of voodoo economics because officially we're not in a recession officially, but segmentally there are certain parts of our economy that are deeply in the recession and segmentally there are certain parts of our economy that are in a depression. It just depends upon where you are. It just depends upon what you're doing. Cause this, this is something I've noticed with my car rental business and it started in October. I woke up one morning and I had 12 people late. This problem has not gone. It's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. And that is a canary in the mind signal that the economy isn't, you know, once again, we have this segment of the economy, this stimulus economy, excuse me, the stimulus economy. And we're moving from the stimulus economy to the real economy and the real economy sucks because I would say, depending on where you are, cause you, you got to look at the economic segments. Because if you look at the overall picture and you look at the overall official voodoo numbers, we're just fine. We're just fine. There's no problem. There's no issues except murder is spiking 30%. Domestic abuse is spiking. Suicides are spiking. So, if the economy is fine, why do we have all these indicators that the economy isn't fine? I'm about to explain to you exactly why. Years and years ago, I bought these bar stools from this girl named Darby. Darby, that's her name. That should give you an indicator of her family pedigree. So I go to their house to pick up the stools and I see that she's really young and the guy who's her I think her boyfriend or husband or fiance, he's really young. I see a Porsche Cyan in the driveway. I see a BMW 740i in the driveway. And then I got curious because she seemed to be super young. So I find her Facebook page and I find out that Darby is 24 and her boyfriend is 26 and they just bought this house. And then I, go to her Facebook friends and I find mom and dad, dad, CEO, mom, doctor, your daddy is a CEO. Your mama is a doctor. And then I looked through her friend profile and I, I saw the same thing over and over again. I saw a replication of well to do young people that come from money. Your daddy a CEO, your mama a doctor. That's just, that's money. At the low end, that's half a million dollars a year annual income mom and dad bringing in at the low end. So it is no for the Darby's of the world, the economy is fine. The economy is doing well. But for the Shaniquas, the Jalils, the Pookies, the Ray Rays, mm -mm. no, 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 no. Cause see, here's the thing. Cause I found a Facebook post cause I, I had to do some digging. I had to really, really dig. And she sent a post thanking her mom and dad for giving her the down payment for the house. Pookie, Ray Ray, you can't go to mom and dad and ask for a down payment. You, you can't even go get the electric bill from mom and dad. You can't get the cell phone bill, let alone a substantial down payment in the house. I looked up the house. I got real nosy. The house was 750. So they put down like 200 K for the Darby's of the world. The economy is fine because the Darby's of the world are living in a resource rich economy. So if you're living and you could be really smart, you could be really hardworking, but if you're living in a resource deficient economy, 
you can break your left nut working and it still won't make any difference. You know, in my video talking about I was wrong that you could get rich because I had to look, I had to really, really understand Because when I came to YouTube in 2009, YouTube was nothing what it is today. It is, that was 12 years ago, totally different. But I learned, and let me go ahead and explain what I learned. When I was selling, I used, if you don't know my story, I used to be in the storage auction uh, business and I used to go body storage auctions and we had two storefronts and we had a warehouse. And this was 2003 and four and five. And one of the things I hated, cause you know, I, I like being out at the auctions. I like buying stuff. I like, I just hated sitting in the store, waiting on someone to show up and buy something just used to drive me crazy. So when I was in the store, what I would do was be posting Craigslist ads. And what I learned is that posting Craigslist ads, posting eBay ads, posting stuff on Amazon, stuff so much faster than just sitting and waiting. And one day I went to my business partner and I said, hey, let's shut down the storefronts. Yeah, that's gonna piss off the landlords because we're gonna break the lease, but I don't care and move everything to the warehouse and just go to an online business model. Within three months, our revenues 5X'd. This was 2003, four and. So the writing was on the wall way back then that the internet was the future. And then when I left the storage auction business and came to YouTube and Facebook, uh, years ago, I had a Facebook group that used to make me about 15, 20,000 a month. Facebook group. So what I did for myself is move from a resource deficient environment of normal retail. I even on here in this channel, I got videos talking about you should not open up a retail store. For many years, I was like, don't open up a retail store. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You know, if you Google uh, operating a hundred thousand dollar business out of a warehouse, that's something that I talked about years and years ago because essentially the the de stimulus, the de stimulized economy, is a resource deficient environment. And when I came to the internet, for me, it was a resource rich environment. And that's one of the reasons I did so well, because now, because, you know, during the holidays, I was just doing a lot of research, a lot of analyzing. Sometimes I would lay in bed and I would just think, how did you end up here? Because it was a different conversation, because I asked myself a question when I was homeless, how did I end up here? But how did you end up here? Because I operate in a resource rich environment and that's why I'm successful. And I'm gonna say something. When you operate in a resource rich environment, whether you work hard or you don't work hard, it doesn't really matter. I know that that, that, that sounds crazy, but when you, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, Barack Obama from an intellectual standpoint is much smarter than George W. Bush. But guess who's richer? George W. Bush, because George W. Bush was operating in a resource rich environment. And you know, I, I'm going, I got a lot to talk about that because if you are operating like the car rental business, um, when I got in the car rental business, it was the stimulus economy. And because it was the stimulus economy, it was a resource rich environment. And I didn't have people, I had people rent cars and never were late. Then as the economy deleveraged and we started to move back to the real economy, people operating with real money, people operating on real fiscal dynamics, the money started to dry up. Christmas was funky this year because people didn't have money. So this notion that the economy overall is fine 
is fundamentally false. There are segments of the economy that are great. And there are segments of the economy that suck. And this is why also, you know, from a business standpoint, what I feel with the car rental business is it's going to get worse and worse and worse because um, the fundamentals of the car rental business, I'll probably talk about that in a separate video on Hustlers Kung Fu, but it's gonna get worse and worse because it's operating in a resource deficient environment. Let's look at it. Why are people renting cars? Because they can't afford to buy a car. That is a resource deficient environment. And when you operate in resource deficient environments, it's a struggle. It's just a struggle. And when you look at the overall economy, you got to look at the segments because overall, these fake voodoo economic numbers, they will lie to you. They will have you believing the economy is fine. Like once again, I, I have some people calling this the channel of doom and gloom, right? And I'm just sitting there like, if you believe me telling you the truth is doom and gloom, oh well, oh well. And even though wages have gone up, and if you didn't know anything, wages, real wages did not move up for about 40 years. Wages just recently started moving up about five years ago. So wages stayed stagnant for about 40 years. And then when you add in the offshoring of manufacturing and then wages stagnation and then the removal of a pension and the introduction of the 401k, all this sets up a recipe for economic disaster for the common man. Once again, the Darby's of the world, they're going to be fine because they're operating in resource rich environments, but the Pookies and Ray Rays, they're going to be catching it. I remember years and years ago when I was poor, not poor, poor, I couldn't afford the other O and R. I was just poor. I remember working really, really hard one week. And you, know, you know how much money I made that week? $250 from my full-time job. Then I made like $200 on my weekend job. And this is when I started my little savings program. And I looked at my budget and I had an additional 20 bucks. You know what I did? I bought myself a pizza. I, I bought myself a pizza, some Cokes, some Bacardi, and some um, Doritos. That was the best pizza ever. Because I felt I was living large because I had an extra $20 to buy myself a pizza and some Cokes and some Doritos. Because I was operating in a resource deficient environment. So Eddie Murphy did this skit years ago talking about saltines and Ritz. And when you are in a resource deficient environment, saltines could feel like and taste like Ritz because you're so starved because you're in a resource deficient environment. And when you go through the segmentation of what's happening, yes, from a technical analysis standpoint, wages are rising. Yay. But from a technical standpoint analysis, inflation is <laughs> kicking ass. Inflation ain't playing with people. Inflation is going to cause the, rate, the divorce rate to spike because couples are going to be fighting about money. So from a segmented standpoint, when you start to look in the segments, because let's talk about retail and malls. Retail is in a depression. And also the supply chain shortage. Right now, 
there's still those ships off the coast of California, off the coast of Florida, off the coast of Charleston. Those ships are still there with all that inventory. Now, what happens when you have an abundance of inventory that floods the market? Prices crash. If you're not doing voodoo economics. So yeah, wages are rising, but it's too little too late because in the inflation train has pulled out months ago. So you're here you are with 5% wage increase, but depending on where you live in the country, you have a 16%, the 30%, once again, segments, Real estate, what house you buy, real estate market went up 30%. Rents are going up crazy. I did a video. Rents are going up like crap. I mean, rents going up like rockets. Poosh. Landlords ain't playing. They're like, hey, I'm trying to get some money. I'm trying to recoup some money. I actually did a little perusal and I am seeing houses, in my opinion, rent for way too much money. I saw a house that was 2,500 square feet. It was fully furnished and they were trying to rent this house for $8,000 a month. I don't know if they're gonna get it. I know I wouldn't pay eight grand for that house. No, 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 no. You all know my, my old house, my housing payment was $3,500 for a 5,000 square foot house with a finished basement, plenty of room, secondary bedrooms were larger than, you know, this new construction stuff. So for me, luxuries once tasted become necessities. I could not spend eight grand to live in a 2,500 square foot house when I was spending 3,500 to live in a 5,000 square foot house on two acres. So, my future is going to be real interesting because <laughs> I'm just sitting out there looking because I probably will buy something in the next two years. But I'm going to get a deal because uh, once again, even though I am not buying anything now, I am shopping now because you have to know what the marketplace is going to be. You have to know what's going on. But yeah, wages are rising. And it don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. It means absolutely nothing. Because once again, if you go to the segmentation for people making $150,000 a year, the economy is fine. They can handle inflation, but let's dive into the numbers. We have 160 million people in the workforce, purportedly. 80 million of those people make less than $30,000 a year. Half, Eddie, I want half, half. And then when you move it up to 50,000, about 120 million people out of those 160 million make less, less than 50,000, maybe 130. So the majority of the country is in the income danger zone. And once again, let me refresh your, mind, your memory. The income danger zone is less than $50,000 a year. And once again, it is a resource deficient environment. I mean, you don't have enough money to invest. And you know, um, th this is one of the things that isn't put out on YouTube because many people feel that mindset more so than the amount of money you have to invest matters. You can have the best mindset in the world. You could wake up every day. You could be smiling. You could be cheesing. It's like, I got the best mindset in the world. I only make $25,000 a year though. I looked it up. The average 60 year old portfolio is 200 K. 200 K, not a million. $800,000 short of a million. You want to know why? Because these good, hardworking people invested what they could. And that's what it came up to. 
I love Dave Ramsey, but Dave Ramsey is guilty of this. It's like eight, 10 years, you'll be a millionaire. No, you won't. You know how much money you have to invest to become a millionaire in eight or 10 years? 50 to a hundred thousand dollars a year on top of living. So you gotta throw this money in the market of where we're gonna put it to become a millionaire. You, you need to be a 75 to a hundred thousand dollars a year to become a millionaire in eight to 10 years, depending upon the market. So I feel this is why people are going crazy over cryptocurrency. This is why people are going crazy over NFTs, anything to put some money in the household. How crazy, you know, there, there's YouTube channels that are literally blowing up because once again, someone asked me what rent seeking was. Rent seeking is trying to get income and appreciation and money without an exchange of value like rent these landlords hey you know you're renting this house for 1500 yeah i'm about to raise the rent to 2200 and i'm not painting i'm not doing it that's rent seeking that's rent seeking so everyone wants to rent seek a get money with no exchange of value that's problematic because it's not long-term sustainable there was a lot of talk that Bitcoin was gonna hit 100K by December. I almost did a video, but I leave the crypto people alone because it, it just, people have a very high emotional attachment to Bitcoin. It's puzzling to me. But I almost did a video because I knew it wasn't going to hit 100K by December. And Kathy Wood, one of the proponents of Bitcoin, her fund is crashing. It is crashing. And because here's the thing, there is no penalty for being wrong. Anyone can come on the internet and say, hey, you know, this cryptocurrency is gonna be this and this and this and this. They're wrong. There's nothing bad that happens to them. And they can come out again and make another wildly inaccurate prediction. But once again, I'm getting ready to start teaching some classes called home economics. I know, I don't know. Cause once again, I got a lot of people who are leaving. I, I will say, thank you guys. You guys are leaving some well thought out, deeply analytical comments. Even the people who don't agree with me are putting forward some intellectual rigor. And I really appreciate that because you know, it's one thing that's like, ah, man, you're wrong, but it's a, it's a whole nother thing to write a five paragraph. Well, I feel you're wrong because of this, 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 this. That's cool. That's really cool. And I like the way the new direction of the channel is going because it's bringing me more intellectual people. It's bringing me more thoughtful people. So I really appreciate you guys. So I'm going to start teaching some classes called home economics. Right now I've got the course next Tuesday at 7 PM. We have our second live training session. And what I'm going to do is make the first training session free at B school for hustlers and the link will be below because I feel that everyone needs this information because I'm getting ready to start a financial services firm because a lot of people don't understand money. They don't, you know, I make these videos and I talk about things because I study this stuff and I know this stuff, but the average person doesn't know that. So I'm going to start doing classes called home economics. If you're in B school, if you're in the corporate papers or a corporate toolbox, you get this free. You don't have to worry about it. But uh, I'm gonna start teaching you guys how to analyze the economy from a deep and thoughtful analysis because like, once again, wages are rising. We're not in a recession from a technical analysis standpoint, but when you take the economy and you chop it up and you chop it up in these segments and then you look at this segment, oh, this segment is in a recession. This segment is in a depression. This segment's not doing well. This segment's doing amazingly well. Amazon did well during the pandemic. 
Target did well during the pandemic. Walmart did well during the pandemic. But why did they do well? They were positioned to do well. They spent billions on their supply chain. So they were already poised to do well, regardless of what the economy did. The economy, we would have to have a global reset two times worse than the 1920s Great Depression to really impact Walmart, to impact Google, to impact. It would have to get really, really, really bad because these companies, they're so massive and their reach and scale is so large, it's kind of hard to knock them off their axis. It's kind of like, I don't know if you guys remember the bus, uh, I can, Jerome Bettis he used to be a running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Jerome Bettis was about 5'10", 250, very square man. And when he would hit that hole, he was hard to knock off his axis because he was so solidly built. And that's how these companies are. They're built. They're solidly built. So yeah, wages are going up, but big whoop because inflation has to inflation has been like a tornado hitting a trailer park. 16 to 30%, depending on what segment that you're occupying. Everyone here needs a house, a place to live. 30%, that's huge. That's huge. Food, everyone needs food. Food prices have gone up. Everyone needs food. So once again, home economics, the link will be below and I will start teaching these classes and teaching you guys how to analyze the broader economy from a, because once again, if you just read uh, CNBC and listen to the talking heads, the economy is fine. But I got people breaking my car window to get into my car and they can't see what's in there because they, they need money. But the economy is fine. The economy is fine. The economy, certain segments of the economy are great. And if you're in those segments, you're doing well. But if you're not, you're pretty much screwed. Pretty much screwed. This is why everyone's trying to become a YouTuber. Because if you can make videos and get a lot of views, you can make a lot of money. I have YouTube friends, people I know that do a million a month from YouTube million a month but they're also some of the hardest working people i know because this ain't easy there were people will tell you start a youtube channel it's so easy um it's not it's not the top 10 percent of youtubers make 95 percent of the youtube money and the majority of creators make hardly anything or nothing so once again, we're going to get into the home economics because, you know, it felt good to get back to training to, you know, so the link will be below and these will be classes and uh, I'll put together packages and things, but home economics and we'll be talking about it because from a financial standpoint, the way that I teach personal finance, because uh, the free training will be very beneficial to you because no one's ever told you these things before. No one's ever told you these things before because these are the things I have learned by being an entrepreneur and by handling my finances in a certain manner that has made significant benefit into my life. But yeah, wages are rising, but inflation, the inflation bus has already left the station and you know, wages would have to rise 15 to 20 percent to make an appreciable difference in what's going on. Five percent. Five percent is like spitting in the wind. You spit and it comes back and slaps you in the face. That's what five percent does in this inflationary cycle that we're in. And expect more inflationary pressure. Expect way more. All right. So home economics, the free course, all this other stuff's below. And I will talk to you guys in the next one.